Willkommen zu unserer Pride-Woche 2021. Äh, noch immer etwas gewöhnungsbedürftig, aber wir werden auch äh, dieses Jahr noch schaffen. Ähm, wir haben heute den Fokus auf Polen. Wie geht es der Queer-Community in Polen? Und uh, therefore, we are now switching to English, because we are very happy to have Mariusz with us. Hello. Mariusz Kurt is the chief editor of Replika, the only gay magazine that exists in Poland. And we are very happy to have Mariusz here to get a first-hand perspective on what it is like to live as a queer person in Poland. Welcome, Mariusz. Thank you for the invitation. Welcome, yes. CSD Munich wants to send a clear signal with this night and with the topic of uh, gay pride, with one of the topics of themes of gay pride yeah. in Munich this year, to the East European uh, queer community, that we are trying to do what we can to get you visibility, to get you support. And therefore, we are very interested um, in your first-hand perspective of mm -hmm. what it is like to live as a gay man, as a lesbian woman in Poland. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let me start off by asking you, um, you know, you arrived in Munich only this afternoon. Yes. Uh, I got you from the station. What's your first impression of Munich? Well, my first impression is that it's raining. <laughs> and, and it's very hot in Poland, actually, right now. In okay. Warsaw, it's more than 30 degrees. And in Munich, it's like 20 degrees and a lot of rain. But uh, despite the rain, I could see a lot of rainbow flags mm -hmm. all over the city. Mm -hmm. I could see some rainbow flags on tramways, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic, I think. And we had that just once in the city of Poznań in Poland. Okay. And it was just for one day. And there were a lot of protests against okay. it. And here I could see the trams just going freely with the rainbow flags. Mm -hmm. And then I could see a big rainbow flags uh, at the city hall, mm -hmm. which is very, which would be very unusual in Poland, mm -hmm. in any city hall in any city, okay. which is a shame. So I, I actually was a little bit, you know, envious that you have that in Munich and we don't. I can well understand that. Right? And uh, hearing that from you makes me, makes us, uh, again, realize what we have, right? Yeah. Uh, because when you were pointing it out at the city hall that these six massive flags were uh, hanging there, you know, it, uh, it dawned on me that it, you know, it's not that long ago that it started. So yes. it's a great sign yeah. to yeah. us yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. being welcome. Right? Yeah. And you, it's been like 20 years since you, uh, since you introduced the, the civil unions, right? 2001. I believe in Germany. The first level of it, yes. The first, so mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get to the, the level of civil unions mm -hmm. as of now yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, 20 years of discrepancy between us. And even in Germany, right, the uh, legislation, the full, is not still yet 100%, but the full uh, equal rights we only got in 2017, right? Yeah. But we, we come to talk about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I introduced you as the chief editor of Replica. So uh, we have got a few uh, magazines here of Replica. It's a, a bi-monthly magazine. And please tell us a bit more about Replica. What, what's the focus of the magazine? Mm -hmm. um, who started it? And mm -hmm. how are you managing a magazine, a gay magazine in uh, okay. Poland? OK. Uh, Replica was founded in 2005 the main Polish LGBT organization at that time and still until now. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of that organization is Campaign Against Homophobia. Okay. And the founder of Replica was, was the uh, chairman of the organization, mm -hmm. Robert Biedroń, who became, who later on became the first openly gay member of parliament in Poland. Okay. Then the first openly gay mayor of the city in Poland, of okay. the city of Słupsk, and is now member of the European parliament. Uh, so it was his idea to, uh, to establish the, the magazine. And I was one of the volunteers who just came to, the, uh, to Robert okay. and said, I, I want to work on mm -hmm. this magazine. Okay. That was 16 years ago. Okay. And uh, we have been very slowly but, but gradually expanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the last three years have been really crucial for us. Okay. Uh, there has been a really great development of our magazine. Mm -hmm. The circulation rose, the number of subscribers rose, mm -hmm. the sales rose, everything is on the rise now. Okay. Because unfortunately the political homophobia is also on the rise in Poland now. So a reaction to that? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are focusing on interviews mm -hmm. with, uh, and that I promised myself to do, with uh, openly LGBT people mm -hmm. uh, because we want to promote openness mm -hmm. instead of being in the closet, you know. Mm -hmm. We want to promote openness about being LGBT. Mm -hmm. That's why from the very first issue in 2005 until now, we are doing interviews with openly LGBT people, mm -hmm. um, journalists, actors, uh, singers, politicians, of, you know, everybody so that, is, we, that is willing to talk to us. So we could say that your, your um, uh, front, your covers, yeah. are usually also role models for coming out? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The, the issue that you are holding in your hands now has, uh, uh, has Mr. Franek Broda on, on the cover. He's an 18-year-old boy mm -hmm. and he's the nephew of Polish Prime Minister. Uh, he came out uh, and he said that he's against the politics of his uncle. Okay. Which is uh, obviously quite a difference to our uh, German gay magazines, which usually have models on it, but not role models. I yeah. mean, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a quite, I interesting, that. Change. Yes. A quite yes. interesting change. Yeah. How does Republika finance itself in, um, in these special, you know, difficult times? We don't have, gra we, we don't have, we are not financed by any institution. We don't have big sponsors, we don't have any big investors, we don't have any big companies fi uh, financing us. Mm -hmm. uh, the main source of, of the income for, for our magazine is subscribers. Okay. Um, and the number of subscri subscribers, as I said before, is on the rise. Mm -hmm. And actually it's, uh, we've got 2,500 subscribers okay. as of now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the main source of Income. Of money, of income for us. Uh, the second one would be uh, uh, would be sales of, of just uh, you know copies, uh, copies. Yeah. Uh, and then I would say some uh, some sponsors, physical persons, mm -hmm. and then maybe like you know uh, like the the fourth or fifth level, the advertisements. Okay. So uh, I think. A lot of companies still in Poland are afraid mm -hmm. to, uh, support. to support uh, openly LG LGBT magazines. There are just a few of them. Mm -hmm. Which is also a significant difference. You know, our exactly. LGBTI magazines are all financed by are, ads only. And they're full of ads, yeah. yeah. And we, you <laughs> and know, full of ads. If, if we wanted, to, even if you wanted to, to have a magazine like that, we, we, you couldn't do it. We, we couldn't do it, yes. I understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how did you become the chief editor? Uh, you know, in 2005, I was just a volunteer who mm -hmm. had no uh, experience in journalism. I just wanted to write and I wanted to do the interviews with openly gay people. Mm -hmm. uh, I said openly gay people because back in 2005, uh, we were not even aware so much of, of transgender people. Mm -hmm. That that would came a little bit later on. Now mm -hmm. we have... A lot of interviews with transgender people too. Okay. So uh, I just became the volunteer, then I became the deputy chief editor, and in 2009 I became chief editor, so it's okay. been 12 years. Okay. And it's been my passion, you know. Uh, yeah. Me and our volunteers, and there are more than 10 of us, like around 13 people, we work for free. Mm -hmm. we, uh, it's after hours, you know, we have our jobs. Mm -hmm. And apart from there are jobs, we have a replica to work on. Mm -hmm. And we are so happy that for six, for six months now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can reach replica in one of the biggest Polish um, chain stores you for, can buy, for you books mean, right? and magazines. Mm -hmm. And you can just buy replica, mm -hmm. not just through our website, but okay. you can go to the store. It's called MPIC, and you can just buy, buy it. it mm -hmm. Thanks. Sounds great. Yeah. And I could feel your passion when we talked about it before. <laughs> yes, thank you. 
Marsh, what is it like uh, right now to live as a lesbian woman, as a gay man, mm -hmm. as a transgender person mm -hmm. um, in Poland? You know, it's been, it's been a very difficult journey for me. When we joined the EU, when Poland joined the EU in 2004, me and many LGBT people in, in Poland, uh, we thought, okay, from now on, everything will be slowly going Better. towards the right direction. It will slowly be improving, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember myself thinking in 2004 that, well, perhaps maybe in some five years we will get to civil union. Just homophobic, it's, it's, it's extremely homophobic. Mm -hmm. um, Hold on. Yeah. Marish, just a second. Okay, good. Yeah. Very homophobic government. So, so extremely homophobic government. And well, I could go on quoting, you know, prominent politicians like mm -hmm. our president who said last year in June uh, during the presidential campaign, uh, he said explicitly, LGBT people are not people. Mm -hmm. We are called ideology not mm. people. Mm -hmm. uh, the Minister for Education says that we are not normal people. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Archbishop of Krakow, a very important and influential figure, said that uh, we are rainbow disease mm -hmm. and we have to, you know, Poland should get rid of mm -hmm. the rainbow disease. Mm -hmm. And I could go on, you know, quoting like, if, for example, you know, one of the Polish... Um, Members of the European Parliament uh, wrote in the, uh, on, on Twitter, Poland is most beautiful without LGBT people. You all have read that here also. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to be LGBT and to live as an LGBT person in Poland nowadays. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I'm constantly wondering whether this is better or the situation where there was complete silence was better. Mm -hmm. And I think it might be controversial what I'm saying right now, mm -hmm. but for me, hatred is better than nothing. It forces you It's, out. it's better than indifference. Mm -hmm. Because when I was growing up, there was, there was total silence. Mm -hmm. There was total indifference. Mm -hmm. uh, you could not hear about LGBT people at all mm -hmm. in media. Mm -hmm. And now... Uh, if you are a young LGBT person in Poland, uh, you hear about other LGBT people every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, most often you hear about them in a very negative way, mm -hmm. but you are aware of their existence. Mm -hmm. You can't feel alone. alone. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the good thing. I understand that. I understand that. What do you think makes these politicians so homophobic, to act so homophobic? What, what drives them? Oh my God, that's, that's a very difficult question because, uh, because that's so hard to understand, right? It is. To, to, you know, we, we, had this, uh, we had the same thing several years ago against refugees. Mm -hmm. And my, uh, I was trying to understand that and I couldn't mm -hmm. either, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, how from where such a hatred comes from mm -hmm. towards, for example, refugees mm -hmm. or black people or, you know, any other groups of people. Mm -hmm. So I, the source of homophobia, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably uh, the, the patriarchal system that we all live in mm -hmm. uh, is creating homophobia and the, the system that is against uh, equal rights for women is also mm -hmm. the, the, it's the same, same system, mm -hmm. the same source that is against equal rights for LGBT people. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, if you ask me, like, how did this happen? I would probably uh, be, you know, I would, I would probably be helpless. Mm -hmm. I have read in uh, one um, source that they say it is to diffuse, to distract the public from real problems in Poland. And some politicians use us to deflect from their own big, you know, yeah. mistakes yeah. or... Yeah, because they are desperate to have the enemy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
uh, because they, they want to uh, scare people. Mm -hmm. And we are those horrible people that those politicians have to protect the society from. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep saying for, you know, for 16 years, we have to come out. Mm -hmm. Because if we, not all, because it's, you know, I'm, I'm not that naive, mm -hmm. but if we come out massively, mm -hmm. they won't be able to scare people with us. Mm -hmm. Because most of the people just will know LGBT people and will not be scared of us. That's why we have to come out. That's our weapon. It's a really interesting discussion that we had in Germany in the 1980s, where yeah. within the LGBTI community, there was a big debate. Is coming out good or not so good? And, you know, do we scare people away or do the opposite, right? So what you just described was actually mirroring what we experienced in the 1980s. Yes. I mean, the, the coming out and being open is the weapon that we all have. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I'm not encouraging, you know, a 15-year-old mm -hmm. boy or girl who has uh, horrible uh, homophobic parents mm -hmm. to come out because that would be too risky for, mm -hmm. for that person. But there are a lot of people who are not 15, but, I don't know, 35, and, uh, and, very, and very wealthy mm -hmm. and, and independent mm -hmm. and they could use their voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm just furious they not. When, they, when they are not using their voice, when they are silent, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, um, I keep calling to them, I keep emailing them, mm -hmm. asking them for interviews for mm -hmm. my magazine. Mm -hmm. And most of the times, uh, uh, there is refusal. Mm -hmm. I'm furious. It, you know, it, it really gets to you, mm -hmm. uh, well the silence from them. Mm -hmm. From their own, from the peer group. Right? Yes. How does Parliament, does Parliament play a role or uh, is, pil is Parliament silent as well? Is it all led by government and president? It's just led f by the ruling coalition who is very homophobic, so you... We cannot expect any any good things from Parliament, apart not from even the opposition. Ap apart from some members of the opposition, mm -hmm. not all of them, okay. uh, and there are some. Yes, okay. uh, I could say out of out of 460 Polish members of Parliament, there are some. I don't know, maybe 50, mm -hmm. so 10 percent, mm -hmm. uh, who are really LGBT friendly. Yes. Are there any openly gay? Uh, or lesbian members of parliament? Uh, three, or transgender? Th three of them. Three. Mm -hmm. uh, one gay guy and mm -hmm. two bisexual women. Okay. Yeah. Do they have a voice? Do they, are, they, are they able to, to yes. say something in parliament? Or? Yes, they do and they are using their voice. Okay. They are fantastic, yes. Okay. What does justice do? Uh, does justice do anything or how do they react if they have cases of homophobic... Uh, you know, violence? They are on the side of homophobes. Okay. Yeah, they are on the side of homophobes. Yes. So do people who are a victim of homophobic attacks even go to the police? Or because they know they don't have a chance in, in court anyhow, that they don't even go? Most of them, they don't even go to the police and not, and not even because they fear the, the police won't help them they don't go to the police because they are in the closet. Okay. Because they, they are afraid of revealing that they have been beaten up because they are gay or lesbians, lesbian. you know? Understand. So it starts very early. Mm -hmm. not, not that I'm openly gay, but the police is homophobic. Mm -hmm. I'm not even openly gay. I'm not even, I'm so ashamed of myself I can't be that I won't even tell the police that I was beaten up because, I, because I'm gay. That, that would be the majority of cases. And, uh, and me, as a, as a chief editor, I had uh, a, quite a few similar cases when people who were beaten up would write to us, mm -hmm. just speak their minds, mm -hmm. uh, and they would describe the situation. Mm -hmm. and, I could, and I would respond to them that I could make your case louder mm -hmm if you 
openly said what happened to you. Mm -hmm. okay. If you stay anonymous, it won't be it, it, it won't be so impactful, you know, mm -hmm. because it will be just a story of some boy or a girl. You have to you have to say it aloud, mm -hmm. and then those people would say, "Oh uh, uh, no, sorry, okay. no, I can't." I understand. That's why it's so important, and we hope we will make it technically possible, right, to have our conversation available online yeah. afterwards, so you can you guys can publish that, and you know it maybe encourages more people to speak out and, and exactly. be open. Right? Yes. What's the legislati the legislation right now regarding queer people in Poland? What's the status of legislation? Well, the the only the one and only uh, uh, mention of sexual orientation in the whole Polish legal system mm -hmm. is the ban on discrimination against uh, sexual orientation in the labor code. Okay. And that was the condition uh, to enter the European Union. We okay. had to, Poland had to introduce that ban okay. in the labor code to get to the European Union. Mm -hmm. And that is the only... Reason why it was integrated. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there is no civil unions uh, the, um, uh, 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 our, our legal system does not know the, the idea of, uh, of a crime, of a hate crime, mm -hmm. based on homophobia, for example. Okay. So the police say, well, we have not had any cases of crimes uh, okay. motivated by homophobia. Well, they have not because they, they are not obliged to count them. You know, they, have, they, they don't have statistics because they are not obliged to to count them. So, we, you know, and each year uh, we get those data, like for example, in Great Britain, uh, there have been 5,000 cases of hate crimes uh, motivated by homophobia, and in Poland, zero. Mm. The I situation see. is fantastic, better than in Great Britain. They, they have thousands of cases, and Poland has nothing, mm. has zero cases. That's why reporting right, yeah. is the key. Yeah. We talked about what does this situation, uh, what is this situation influenced about by, by what you know forces in society. So an important force in Polish society is of course the Catholic Church. Oh yeah. You have mentioned the Archbishop of uh, Krakow. Don't even get me started, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> we need to, right? We need to. You can get me started on that too. But, um, so you talked about uh, the the Archbishop of Krakow. He's famous for his, and uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's, not, and he's not the exception. So, please tell us a bit about uh, why and what makes the Catholic Church so engaged in this topic. What makes them so engaged? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they realize they are losing their position. Mm -hmm. Not in Poland yet, but uh, across the world. And the, uh, the more system is not uh, based on male domination, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the worse for them. And if you introduce civil unions and then equal marriage, mm -hmm. it makes both genders more equal. Mm -hmm. And that's horrible for them because Catholic Church is the institution that is based on uh, not... Male dominance male dominance mm -hmm. and just the, the the simplest example you cannot be a priest if you're a woman right mm -hmm. so the the fundamental thing about the catholic church is male dominance okay. and everything that is against male dominance is mm -hmm. horrible is 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 uh, weakening the church yes is disadvantage disadvantages for them mm -hmm. so equal marriage is also disadvantages for them mm -hmm. so that's why they are fighting so strongly because mm -hmm. we as a whole society, one day, one day in the future, there will be one day in the future, then we all discover that women are not worse than men in any way. Mm. <laughs> one day. Right? One day. One day. Yeah. Um, also in Poland, there were some massive abuse scandals yeah. uh, in the Catholic Church uncovered. Yeah. And they are very often... Uh, um, priests who abuse um, boys or young men. Yeah. So, how does the Catholic Church in Poland deal with that? Because that is undermining their story, 
about you know their anti their their homophobia phobic story in a way. Yeah. Well, first of all, they are mixing pedophilia and homosexuality, okay. because for them it's it's still a sin, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you have sex with forty-year-old man and ten-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. That is a rape, right? Mm -hmm. For them, it's just a sin. Okay. And so for them, the the the, the, the idea of being homosexual and the idea of being pe a pedophile is somehow blurred, you mm -hmm. know, because it's, they are not only homophobic, they are sexophobic, mm -hmm. right? The, the whole sex is, 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 uh, uh, is evil for them. Mm -hmm. and that's why the whole idea of celibacy, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so for them, it's... You know, it, it, to, to, to rape a 10-year-old boy and to have sex with a 30-year-old guy, th those things might be similar. Although for, for them. For them. Mm -hmm. Although for people like us, it's totally different, right? Like two men uh, having sex, it's a perfectly normal thing and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And to have sex with a young boy... It, it's absolutely not okay, right? Okay. So, um, so, the, the, so for them, the, first of all, the, the image is blurred, and then they want to, uh, they, they, if the scandal occurs, they want to divert the, 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 the interest, mm -hmm. and they want to somehow smear us, that somehow this pedophilia is connected with the LGBT Being people. Gay. Like, for example, uh, it's been two years now that the uh, vans are uh, going across the city of Warsaw and other cities mm -hmm. and with loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. and, you can hear, and you can hear uh, that um, we, LGBT people, want to teach four-year-olds how to masturbate. Okay. And it's like, like, it might be even funny for some, for some people, right? Mm -hmm. It's like how ridiculous it can get. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it sounds like why, it. why would I want to teach four-year-olds how to masturbate? How, I mean, it's just how ridiculous is that? But, uh, but a lot of people believe that mm -hmm. because they, they have this blurred image like homosexuals and pedophiles and, uh, and also homosexuality is a disease and also is a contagious. So maybe... If they want to four year, if they want to teach four year olds how to masturbate, maybe they want to create create more homosexuals. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's this image, uh, image, the sick image, mm -hmm. uh, and they take advantage of this uh, human ignorance. Tell us a bit more. How can we imagine that there are uh, vans uh, driving through cities with loudspeakers? Yes, yes, and. Yes. Tell stories like this? Exactly. Even in big cities like Warsaw or well, Krakow? Well, mostly in big cities like Warsaw. Mostly because they, they okay. you know, because a lot of more people listen to that. Like if you, if you have the van going in the city, in the center of Warsaw than in some smaller cities. Yes, it has been horrible. And it's like, I, don't, I can perfectly understand you that it's like beyond your it imagination. Sounds, it, sounds. It, it sounds completely crazy. crazy but yes this is the this is the reality and uh, last year there was one activist and her nickname is Margot and she stopped the van mm -hmm. one of those vans she stopped the van and she well not demolished it completely but she well partly destroyed the van mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. together with other activists mm -hmm. and she got arrested for it mm -hmm. And there, when there were protests against her arrest, police arrested ab about 60 other people, mm -hmm. including one of the volunteers for, for our magazine, Replica. Mm -hmm. okay. it, it was a completely innocent guy mm -hmm. who was just, you know, protesting peacefully. Mm -hmm. And he got, you know, to the ground, handcuffed, and mm -hmm. he was in jail for 24 hours. Okay. And he still awaits prosecution. Uh, he hasn't been accused yet of anything. I'm still trying to imagine the situation, right, of a, of a, of, of young uh, 
uh, people just maybe uh, not yet coming out or not you know who didn't come out yet or yeah. just on the brink of coming out yeah. hearing such a voice on the, on a street i mean it sounds really frightening to me um, is there no yeah. reaction from the people listening to this or from any authority because it's obvious crap as you said right uh, so how how can you imagine that well uh, i I saw the news just today, Thomas, okay. that the city of Warsaw banned those vans. Okay. It, so I heard it today. Okay. Perhaps it happened yesterday. Okay. Uh, but for the last two years, it was happening. Okay. So, you know, the, the city of Warsaw was waiting two years to ban those vans. They must have heard that you're here today. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's good news, at least, that something is going on, right? Because it, it really yeah. sounds unbelievable yeah. to us. Yeah, but not enough. Not enough. Equally shocked we were when we here heard about LGBTI free zones in oh, yeah. um, Poland. Oh, right? yeah. oh yeah. I mean, for those who are a bit more interested in history, we, of course, were all immediately reminded of uh, two free zones in uh, yeah. Germany. Um, and Poland. And Poland. Occupied Poland. Yes. And Russia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, actually, all of Europe, where yeah, Germans yeah. were yeah. Um, dominating and yeah. conquering. Yeah. How have LGBTI free zones come about in Poland? What's what's the idea, and how was it managed? Mm -hmm. You know, it started in the early two thousand and nineteen, mm -hmm. so two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and in in February uh, two thousand and nineteen. We had our quite a big success, we as a LGBT community. Mm -hmm. The mayor of Warsaw signed the declaration of friendliness and of support for LGBT people, okay. together with some agenda, okay. uh, including, for example, the, the promise to establish a hostel for homeless youth, LGBT youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He signed it, in, as I said, in February, mm -hmm. and the outcry the homophobic result of, of his signature under that document mm -hmm. was so big mm -hmm. that a month later, mm -hmm. uh, one of the small municipalities in the eastern Poland mm -hmm. uh, declared itself an LGBT free zone. By the, the city uh, By the city, council or? exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it was through voting of the city councillors. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was driven by a very homophobic or uh, one of the very homophobic organizations okay. uh, in Poland. They, the city councillors, I think they, they didn't do it by themselves. They were encouraged. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, they, they voted independently and okay. they voted for it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of municipalities followed. Mm -hmm. uh, by a lot, I mean around 100. Okay. Uh, which covers the territory of one third of Poland right now. Okay. So you can imagine one third of Poland, mm -hmm. and it's mostly southern and eastern part. Okay. Uh, is is LGBT free zone? Mm -hmm. uh, it's very small municipalities or or some bigger cities too. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, the whole region declared themselves LGBT free zone. A region being similar to a Bundesland. Exactly. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and in one case, in in the case of one region, um, you know, we we had those we have those heads of the regions in Poland mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. appointed by the government, mm -hmm. and uh, in case of region called Lubelskie, mm -hmm. Mr. Czarnek, who was the head of the region, uh, was giving medals to the city councillors who were voting for LGBT free zones. And now he became a minister of education. So okay. now this person okay. is a minister of, of education in Poland. Part of the Polish government. Yes. Okay. And, uh, well, continuing the story about LGBT free mm. zones. So they were, uh, uh, there are some 100 of them right now. But uh, for some time, the number of them has stopped increasing. On the contrary, it has started to decrease. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, some of the municipalities came back to their census okay. and uh, abolished those declarations mm -hmm. themselves. Okay. Okay. Th there, were, there were a few cases like that. Like that. But I was also would like to stress out that the fact that you, being here and a German activist in, in Munich, that you know about LGBT free zones in Poland, mm -hmm. that is the result of the hard work of Polish activists. Mm. It is thanks to them that, uh, that this information spread through Europe. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And it makes us, you know, it, only that makes it possible for us to yes. react. Right? Yes. And we made them uh, known. And that's why we had, for example, last year in September, when Joe Biden was not yet, was not yet mm -hmm. the president of the United States, he was running for presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he wrote on Twitter, there is no place for LGBT free zones, free zones not only in Poland, but in, anywhere in the world. We noticed that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was uh, the European Commission head, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who said, who also sp spoke her mind against LGBT free, free zone. Uh, but, but, but yet, I have to stress that uh, in my opinion, it's all too late, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the first LGBT free zone was established in March 2019. Okay. And the first real voice of opposition towards them was uh, some 18 months after that. Mm -hmm. So we were waiting for the protest from the European, European Union for one year and a half. Mm -hmm. Too much. So you think there were those communities or cities who uh, took the declaration back, so to speak? Yeah. They reacted to that public pressure? Yes. Yes. Not they so realized, much inside. No. They mm. reacted to the public pressure. Mm. They realized it's, it's stupid and it's harmful. Mm -hmm. And they also realized that in the future, maybe not yet, but in the future, they might lose some money from the European Union. Mm -hmm. Okay. So money is... A is, the, is the is the fact <laughs> is the definitely a factor yes okay. <laughs> let's talk about that also yeah uh, more. Mm -hmm. um, how can you know a number of German cities and villages have partnerships with uh, Polish citizen villages? oh yes um, I have read that uh, some Norwegian and French cities have cancelled their partnerships yes. when they declare themselves uh, LGBTI yes. free yes um, what would be your reaction or uh, position on that? I would encourage all those cities or, or villages or small towns uh, to react very strongly, to cut ties with the uh, villages or small towns that declare themselves LGBT free zones, because only the um, such a severe re reaction uh, could work. You know, okay. such a uh, such a strict uh, mm, giving, such a strict opinion. You know, mm -hmm. like we don't want to deal with you anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have anything to do with LGBT free zones. Okay. Some some would argue that um, by staying connected, uh, you have more chance to influence them mm -hmm. uh, and to get them off their course yeah. of yeah. Uh, homophobia. Yeah. What's your perspective on that? I think staying connected would mean that they haven't mm -hmm. done such a horrible thing yet. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you did something wrong, but let's talk about it. Okay. And for me, it's better to say, you did such a horrible thing that we don't want to even talk to you. Okay. I understand. Yep. What's the reaction, or how does the community has been growing for the last, I don't know, three or four years mm -hmm. on a rapid, massive scale? Okay. Um, as I said before, it's been 20 years since the first Pride in, in Warsaw, mm -hmm. 2001. Mm -hmm. And for many years, there were Prides just in Warsaw, Kraków, and then Poznań. Mm -hmm. So, main Polish cities. Mm -hmm. And then until in 2017, we reached the level of seven. Mm -hmm. 
of seven prides mm -hmm. across Poland. Mm -hmm. And then something started, you know, 2017, seven, 2018, 15 prides, okay. 2019, 31 prides, mm -hmm. and then there was pandemic. Mm -hmm. But so, the, so the, the, the number of prides parade started to grow rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, the number of subscribers for our magazine, Replica, Started to, rose, started to rise rapidly too. Okay. The number of volunteers coming to, uh, to our team and, and saying, I want to work for you too, started mm -hmm. to rise rapidly. Okay. Uh, the number of people coming out, the number of people attending Pride, the number of organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, there is now a LGBT organization in every region of Poland. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes, every region of Poland. Okay. So uh, this horrible homophobic situation uh, made a lot of people aware. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the, the situation that I come across very often, that people talk to me and people say, you know, I was thinking for years that things would go smoothly towards bright future. Mm -hmm. But now I see they don't. And I noticed that I didn't do anything, mm -hmm. and now I want to do something. Mm -hmm. I, I finally realized that I have to engage myself. Yeah, active myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is something that I have been waiting for for years. Okay. And now it's happening. So, uh, so that is a very uh, encouraging sign. Mm -hmm. But to, to add something negative, uh, it's not so col colorful because many people still, even those people who are aware that they have to engage, they don't realize that their sexual orientation is also a political thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's not just a social, th social matter mm -hmm. to be accepted in the society, that it also has to do something with politics. Mm -hmm. That you have to vote for people who are for equality. Mm -hmm. You can't be LGBT friendly and vote for homophobes at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> many, many, many people still do. Mm -hmm. okay. And you told me that uh, this guy who um, stood up for uh, the presidency, right? Yes. The, the gay guy? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. He only got, I think, 2% of oh, the yes. votes. Oh, yes, yes. So, the, so the, the founder of Replica, Robert Biedroń, that I mentioned already, mm -hmm. Uh, he was running for the president uh, last year, and it, it, you know it was actually um, we we tend to uh, uh, not see uh, the really fantastic things that are also happening mm -hmm. in Poland. Mm -hmm. For example, in two thousand and eleven, uh, we had Anna Grodzka, the openly transgender uh, woman, mm -hmm. become the member of parliament. Okay, I mean. How many openly transgender people are in the parliament's nation uh, across the world? Absolutely. I, I can tell you nine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and she was the third one. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay. It's moving. It, yeah, the, the third transgender person in Poland. Mm -hmm. And then last year, we had Robert Biedroń, who was the leader of the, of the party. Mm -hmm. and, and also, he, he established that party. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many openly gay uh, mm -hmm. politicians are establishing their own parties mm -hmm. that enter the parliament. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happened in Germany. Uh, we only have it in Munich. All right. <laughs> <laughs> For the city parliament. We do, All right. right, yeah. But that's the only exception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually, I was trying to find some other mm -hmm. uh, politicians across the world. Mm -hmm. The politicians who established their own parties being openly gay mm -hmm. and, and got to the parliament. There are not many examples. I mean, just, you know. So, uh, I understand you saying that the queer community hasn't all, or all of the queer and community we, hasn't we, understood we, yet yeah, the political dimension of he them was, being queer. Yes, it was so groundbreaking that he established that party, mm -hmm. and then he ran for presidency, mm -hmm. uh, being the openly gay person, mm -hmm. and he got only 2% of votes. Not even LGBT community voted for them, right? For, for him. It seems not, no. 
although he was the only candidate mm -hmm. who was uh, unconditionally for equality. Mm -hmm. I understand. Your That's baffling. Your frustration. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about support for Poland, right? Mm -hmm. um, we already mentioned the EU. Yeah. Um, and given the fact that uh, Poland, like mm, quite a number of the newcomers, so to speak, I mean, 17 years is still relatively new for the EU, yeah. uh, they get a lot of money from the EU. Yes. Um, so we get the most because we are the biggest country of those newcomers, mm -hmm. right? Does this have an effect, or what effect does it have on the uh, queer community in Poland? Well, you know, Thomas, many people don't uh, believe me when I say to them that uh, we, uh, uh, Poland receives billions of euros mm -hmm. uh, in the forms of so-called structural funds, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not even one euro went to LGBT organizations. Not even one euro. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> what can you say? So the EU is not using its power. Exactly. To help you guys exactly. and support you. Right? Exactly. I mean, you know, uh, the, the EU said uh, last year, it was September or August, that they presented the strategy towards equality of LGBT people. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic, mm -hmm. but very, very late. Too late. Mm -hmm. And also... With no hardware. Connected uh, to it, right? With no hard, yeah, it was just a declaration, mm. and I was reading about it, and and the, the strategy says that they want to, within next five years, mm -hmm. they want to um, mm, uh, they want to achieve uh, the situation where all the countries mm -hmm. um, uh, recognize mm -hmm. the parents, the the same sex parents, you know, mm -hmm. parenthood. Like, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, deal with LGBT free zones first, maybe. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the priorities is not clear, right? Yeah, or I mean, it's, not, it's not right I mean, for Poland. Yes, I mean, you know, it's just uh, really same-sex parenthood in Lithuania or Poland when we don't have even civil unions, when, we, when one third of our country is LGBT free, free. zone. And you don't do anything with that. Mm -hmm. So how can you achieve same-sex parenthood mm -hmm. recognition? I can feel and understand your frustration very well. Yeah. Um, so let's park the European community. <laughs> yes. uh, we, we have not so much hope. Uh, <laughs> but we have more hope to Germany, right? Yeah. Let's talk about German politics. Yeah, okay. And at this point... I would very much like to welcome Margarete Bause, who joined us from Berlin. And on stage, we are allowed to put our mask off again. <laughs> welcome, Hello. Margarete. Hello. Margarete has been a member of uh, Bundestag um, the last four years. Yes. Correct. And before in the Bavarian uh, Parliament mm -hmm. for many, many years. That's how we know each other for 18 years. 18 years. And is now in the uh, Bundestags Committee for Human Rights. That's why we are very happy to have you here. And to have help us to talk about uh, what politics in Germany can do or what it has done. And that's my first question to you, Marius. Mm -hmm. um, what has German... Um, Government. What has the German government, what has the German parliament done uh, to help you guys um, with the situation that you are in? What has it done? I don't know. I, ha I have not heard about anything. You haven't seen anything? You haven't seen any reaction? or No. No. No, no. I'm just thinking right now. Okay. Uh, no. No. The, the, the recent thing I know, it's not, it's not a German thing. Um, uh, I know the, 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 the Prime Minister of the Netherlands said mm -hmm. there is no place for Hungary in the European Union. 
and I said to myself... Very recently, right? Yes, Very it recently. was just a couple of days mm. ago. Uh, you know, it, it was with regard to this new Hungarian law. horrible homophobic law. Mm. And I thought, okay, that's the kind of statement that I want. Mm -hmm. okay. Like, there is no place for Hungary in the European Union after this law was introduced in Hungary. Like, that's how strict the whole European Union should be, I think. Because the, the, the fundamental rights of the EU are being destroyed right in front of our eyes mm -hmm. by the member countries. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the fact that, you know, how much could Hungary or might Hungary be a model uh, for Poland also, right? With a law like this. It's already right? happening mm -hmm. because uh, our deputy uh, justice minister said a couple of days ago that the similar law on ban on so-called homosexual propaganda is being drafted. Mm. So it's like the next step. Ähm, manchmal äh, sieht man nicht, was eine Regierung tut, weil sie das im Hintergrund tut oder auch ein Parlament. Deswegen die Frage an ähm, dich, sage ich jetzt mal. Ähm, hat das deutsche Parlament, hat die deutsche Regierung irgendwas getan, um der LGBTI-Community in Polen zu helfen? in der Situation, die offensichtlich nicht unbekannt ist? Also wir hatten natürlich mehrfach die Diskussionen im Parlament ja. und auch in meinem Menschenrechtsausschuss und auch in anderen Ausschüssen, aber meistens durch Anträge, die die Opposition eingebracht mhm. hat, die wir oder die Linken oder auch die FDP eingebracht ja. hat. So, uh, Margaret is telling us that yes, as well as in the Parliament, also in the Human Rights Community, the situation in Poland was discussed, mm -hmm. um, mostly by um, Antrag, what is it? By, dra yeah, by drafts that the opposition has brought yeah. into, yeah. put mm -hmm. into Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, es gab auch Reisen, Delegationsreisen von mm -hmm. Abgeordneten nach Polen. Zwei meiner Fraktionskolleginnen, Ulle Schaus und Sven Lehmann zum Beispiel, waren im letzten Jahr in Krakau mhm. und haben dort ganz bewusst die LGBT-Community besucht, haben viele Gespräche geführt, haben das thematisiert, auch mit den offiziellen Gesprächspartnern und äh, haben davon auch im Bundestag berichtet. Also es war ganz bewusst ein Solidaritätsbesuch in mhm. Polen durch deutsche Abgeordnete. So, delegations of the German Parliament have visited Poland. Um, some uh, party mem colleagues of uh, Margarita also uh, speci specifically met with LGBTI um, groups in Krakow, mm -hmm. uh, talked uh, with the officials in Krakow also about the situation, yeah. um, and try and then reported back to the Bundestag about the situation of the queer community in Poland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es gab auch einen Appell von Abgeordneten, ähm, gerade was die ähm, auch an, an, an deutsche Städte und Regionen, die Städtepartnerschaften mit, mit Polen haben, wenn äh, diese polnischen äh, mhm. Partner äh, sich zu äh, LGBT-freien Zonen erklärt haben, ähm, also das sehr deutlich anzusprechen, mhm. möglicherweise sogar die Partnerschaft äh, zu beenden oder auszusetzen, bis diese Resolution zurückgenommen wurde. Mhm. It also gave an appeal of, of the whole parliament or... Part no, no, of, 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 yeah, of yeah. members of, of, of the my... Opposition, yeah, probably, yeah. Right? Um, so it also gave an appeal of uh, members of the opposition um, to the uh, German citizen uh, um, towns and villages mm -hmm. who have partnerships mm -hmm. with LGBTI-free yeah. zones, yeah. in quotations, to either uh, stop the partnership or to pause it and to very clearly uh, signal to their partner communities that this is not what they would accept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aber was ich tatsächlich auch vermisst habe, war ein klares Statement der Bundesregierung. Mm -hmm. äh, gerade als äh, die LGBT-freien Zonen äh, bekannt wurden, auch mm -hmm. bei uns, ähm, auch äh, was bestimmte Gesetzgebung angeht, auch äh, äh, als es das, um, um das Verbot von Abtreibung ging, zum mm -hmm. Beispiel, dass sich die Bundesregierung oder auch die Bundeskanzlerin sehr deutlich dazu mm -hmm. geäußert hätte, das ist leider nicht der Fall gewesen. Also das heißt, nicht nur Marisch hat es nicht mitbekommen, sondern das gab es auch nicht für sichtbar für Parlamentarier. Nein. Um, what Margarete, Margarete herself also was missing was any uh, reaction from the government, right? Particularly yeah. Uh, yeah. Angela Merkel uh, in her role um, to clearly state that we as a German uh, government don't find this acceptable. Yeah. Um, and this has not happened. 
Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, that, that's what I mentioned already about Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. It was very big news mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Poland, uh, although he was not yet a president. Mm -hmm. And then when he became a president, it was even, you know, bigger, news. even bigger, right? Yeah. And it clearly helped. I mean, it, it, yes. it is putting pressure yeah, on yeah, the yeah, Polish yeah, government, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. Because they look to the US in particular as their friend. So to speak. Exactly. And they were very friendly with Donald Trump. <laughs> as we all know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we vote in Germany on the 26th of September. Mm -hmm. And uh, the party Margarete is a uh, member of is very likely to be part of the new government. Yeah. Um, nobody and, uh, knows at that moment. <laughs> nobody knows at the moment, but you know, I'm not making any campaigning anyhow. But uh, just in case, mm -hmm. just in case, yeah. uh, uh, Margaret's party will be part of government. What would you guys mm -hmm. and Lesman Buman and the whole queer community yeah. uh, would expect from the government, from the new German government? To bring the subject up, to keep bringing the subject up. And to say it very, um, very uh, openly. I mean, uh, not say about well, uh, human rights, or respect for minorities. Mm -hmm. That's too vague. Mm -hmm. Just say LGBT people, okay. uh, or any other. If there are other minorities that are under threat, just name them. Mm -hmm. Don't say about just human rights. Be, or, or just equality, mm -hmm. because everybody agrees, right? That we should be equal, of course. Those horrible homophobes, they will tell you, yes, 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 equality is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But if you mention uh, LGBT people are under threat because of you in your countries, that's the whole different situation. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage to, mm -hmm. to speak very to the point, mm -hmm. not not in general terms. I agree, yes. I think that's very important to speak to the point. Uh, but of course, it's a question of human rights. Yeah. It is, uh, but you yeah. have to uh, yes. name it. Don't you have to you name, have to name it? it? That's yes. the question, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's why we uh, uh, used this opportunity to have you here, right? Uh, we have you here today. Uh, when there is a new government in which your party plays a role, spielt, um, wird diese neue Regierung dann machen, was Marius gerade gesagt hat? Oder was sich Marius wünscht? Also, ich bin mir sicher, dadurch, dass ja ähm, das Thema LGBT-Rechte für uns von Anfang an ein ganz zentrales mhm. war und wir ganz wichtige Aktivisten in unserer Partei hatten, mhm. die die Gleichstellung erkämpft haben über viele Jahre. Ich nenne nur Volker Beck okay. zum Beispiel. Ja, so. ähm, sie waren, also die Grünen waren die Ersten, die offen schwul oder lesbisch sich äh, erklärt haben als Abgeordnete. Mhm. So, also die haben wirklich auch aufgrund ihrer eigenen Geschichte, aufgrund ihrer eigenen Erfahrung, haben sie äh, die Gleichberechtigung, die wir heute ähm, haben. Ja, die, die, die wir haben, die haben die erkämpft. So, und deswegen ist es für uns wirklich ein Herzensthema. Also nicht etwas, das ja, muss man machen, sondern das ist wirklich ganz tiefes Anliegen der Grünen. So, und deswegen werden wir das natürlich ähm, auch auf europäischer Ebene, also wir haben da sehr viel mehr Möglichkeiten, es wurde vorhin die, das Geld angesprochen, was mhm. Polen bekommt und dass wir das nicht miteinander koppeln, dass die Grundrechtecharta der EU eingehalten wird mhm. äh, und äh, wenn nicht, äh, dass dann eben Gelder gekürzt werden oder gestrichen werden oder dass wir andererseits Förderprogramme auflegen für die mhm. LGBT Community mhm. in Polen oder mhm. ähm, in, in Ungarn, äh, dass es eine ganz konkrete Unterstützung gibt und dass Länder, die Gesetze verabschieden, die absolut diskriminieren, dass die natürlich dann auch entsprechend das spüren müssen, was die europäischen Gelder angeht. Und da sind wir sehr viel klarer aufgestellt als zum Beispiel die jetzige Regierungskoalition. Margarete has um, um, emphasized at the beginning that uh, the Green Party has always been the party of the LGBTI movement yeah. when it started in Germany, right? Yes. So it's, it's more of a, a heartfelt 
uh, oh, yes. topic for the Green Party than for anyone else. I know the uh, members of Parliament from the Green Party from many years ago, for uh, Volker Beck, I yeah. think. Yeah, Volker, Volker Beck. For example. Yeah. Uh, Definitely uh, the most prominent one. Yeah, and he used to... Uh, he was in Poland. He, he was, was in Poland. Many years, mm. many, many, many times. times. Mm. Um, and there was also another member... I forgot her surname, sorry. Cla Claudia, Cla Claudia, Claudia Roth. Roth. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yes. She's yeah. Bavarian also. Right. Uh, and she would give such powerful speeches during mm -hmm. pride parades. Mm -hmm. Also here. So, so yes. yes we, yeah. And now I, I translate uh, very freely what uh, Margarita has said. And she promised that when the Green Party is in Parliament, that they will... In government. In, in government that they will... Um, be very clearly speaking out as a government, uh, to the Polish government. Thank you. Uh, that um, human rights are not negotiable. Yeah. yeah. And not only human rights in general, yeah. but LGBTI rights in specific, specifically. Yeah. And that they would use also their power in the European Union uh, to uh, do exactly what you said, right? To use the, uh, the driver of money exactly. uh, to make, to force a change, right? Yeah. And not only in terms of uh, having funds connected or conditioned by the fact of, uh, you know, accepting human yeah. rights yeah. and specific LGBTI rights, but also specifically in supporting LGBTI programs exactly. for countries like Poland and Hungary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I mean, this abbreviation has to appear in documents, mm -hmm. this abbreviation LGBT has to start appearing mm -hmm. on the on the official documents so that we know that it's just specifically for mm -hmm. LGBT. Because if you say it's for minorities, we, we yeah. won't get any... any you know. So, Margarita, we have a marker here, right? And the Maßstab, sozusagen. An dem Marius eine grüne Regierungsbeteiligung messen wird. Nämlich, ob in den Erklärungen LGBT auch vorkommt. Right? I'm just translating that. Yeah, yeah. You will have a, your, your measurement for the new government in Germany is whether <laughs> LGBTI uh, is mentioned in declarations and, and yes. agreements or not. Yes. Right? Specifically yeah. mentioned. Right? Thank I'll you. do what I can. <laughs> I, can. Can I give you one example? One please, more example? Because please, I, uh, please. I just remembered. Uh, it was from just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was discovered and it was put on the news that there is some priest uh, uh, during religion classes, you know, mm -hmm. at some school in, in, in Poland, and he was teaching uh, that homosexuality is not only a sin, it should be cured by electroshocks. Mm -hmm. And when it was revealed, he said he was just teaching about the church's attitude towards homosexuality. So nothing wrong with electroshocks. Mm -hmm. And then he was defended by our deputy minister, so he was, you know, it was not just a on the level of just one church, you know, somewhere. Mm -hmm. He was defended by the deputy minister. Mm -hmm. uh, that's torture. Of course. Yeah. Of course, that's torture. So we are on this level, right? Mm -hmm. We are not being tortured yet, but there, there are some mm -hmm. voices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Baruch has mentioned the... Um, education minister in Poland uh, who uh, uh, gave out medals for uh, members of parliament who members declared of, uh, of city councils, city councils who yes. declared themselves of uh, yeah. LGBTI for so on. Um, that made me think um, how would uh, should it happen uh, a, a Green Party uh, member in the office of education minister in Germany, how would he or she deal or act with a Polish colleague who gives out medals for, uh, you know, voting for a LGBTI-free zone? I've really had this in my <laughs> mind uh, since we talked about this over coffee, yeah. and I'm thinking, how will this work, mm. right? Aber das ist ein wichtiger Punkt. Ich glaube, dass es nicht nur Aufgabe des Außenministeriums ist, so anzusprechen, sondern wirklich, 
wir haben ja in allen Bereichen den Austausch, die Kontakte, die Treffen. Und dann muss das die, die Kultusministerin oder die Umweltministerin oder der Wirtschaftsminister oder wer auch immer bei all diesen Treffen, bei all diesen Delegationen und auch wenn Parlamentarierinnen und Parlamentarier dabei sind, müssen immer die Themen LGBTIQ angesprochen werden. So, also das äh, immer, ähm, also das ist auch meine Erfahrung in der Menschenrechtsarbeit, dass wir mit, auch mit autoritären Regimen, äh, mit, mit äh, fremdenfeindlichen, menschenfeindlichen Regimen, dass wir egal, was es gerade für eine Delegation ist und, und um was es im Detail geht, immer diese Grundsatzfragen ansprechen müssen, sodass sich eigentlich keine Regierung sozusagen sicher sein kann, dass schwierige, kritische Fragen nicht angesprochen werden. Und ich glaube, das ist die Aufgabe eben auch einer Kultusministerin, einer Wissenschaftsministerin, in diesen Gesprächen mit ähm, polnischen, ungarischen Kolleginnen und Kollegen immer diese Themen anzusprechen, um deutlich zu machen, äh, das widerspricht im Kern unseren europäischen Werten. Margarete is uh, saying that not even only the um, Secretary of Education yes, should talk to his colleague. Yes. Okay. Yes. Should, mm -hmm. to, should talk to his colleague, but you know, in every aspect, yes. we should bring up the topic, yeah. right? And as experience with politics, at least my limited experience with politics shows that um, it heavily depends on, uh, unfortunately, still, right. Um, party memberships, how, how Secretary of uh, Minister uh, agieren in ihren Ämtern. Uh, deswegen auch bewusst die Frage, um, oder letztendlich die Bitte, uh, damit zu helfen, dass sich uh, die grünen Minister uh, da sehr klar aufstellen, egal welches Ressort sie vertreten, uh, wenn sie mit ihren polnischen Kollegen sprechen, uh, weil wir da den direkten Hebel haben. I've just asked uh, Margaret because we, we, we have experience with politics that it, it depends heavily on which party members have what office, yeah. you know, yeah. to, to help us and to yeah. make sure that yeah. uh, those uh, green secretaries, uh, um, minister as we call them here, yeah. um, that they do whatever resort they uh, represent, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, raise the topic in Poland with their colleagues to make sure that they can't escape. Right. But yes. it also um, have to be um, a, a question in, um, for, for the Chancellor. Uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Wenn yeah. wir eine mm -hmm. Kanzlerin haben sollten, dann denke ich, ist es sowieso klar. Team. Aber mm -hmm. auch um, wenn es einen anderen Kanzler geben sollte, es muss immer Chefsache sein. Mm -hmm. Weil das einfach nochmal eine andere Aussage ist, ob die Ressortminister sich dazu mhm. äußern, wenn der Chef oder die Chefin mhm. deutlich macht, ja. dass LGBTIQ-Feindlichkeit keine Grundlage hat, ja. dass ja. das nicht vorkommen darf. Das hat einfach eine andere ja. Wirkung und deswegen ist es so wichtig, dass es tatsächlich auch von der Kanzlerin oder vom Kanzler ja. deutlich gemacht wird. You know, I'm, I'm just a newsreader in Poland. Uh, I'm mhm. not, of course, I'm not a politician. But I, I, I was just reading the news like uh, several weeks ago, and it was quite big uh, in, in the Polish media that uh, Angela Merkel was not willing to meet with our prime minister. Mm -hmm. And that was a very clear sign mm -hmm. from, you know, from her. Mm -hmm. And now thinking about it, I think I can see that Margarete will help you, just thinking about it, will help you to get an interview with one of the members of the new government in Replika. Wouldn't that be an idea? Oh, that would I be great. That would be a great idea, right? <laughs> a great idea, yeah. I, mean, I was just thinking about it. Um, I think so first be, step, we have to come to the okay, government. Okay, we wait then for that. And then, you know, I think we... Now, and, you know, you and, can, now, and now can you imagine an openly gay minister? That would be even better, right? That would be, you know... Like we have openly gay prime minister in Luxembourg, right, yeah. uh, Mr. Xavier Beto. Yeah. Like imagine, the prime minister, right? Even. Imagine to be him talking to Polish prime minister, mm -hmm. or imagine a German uh, minister for education that is openly gay talking to mm -hmm. that homophobe, right? Mm -hmm. Like that would be even there. Steer up things, right? Yes. And I, I remember that idea, Margaret, right? 
we'll, let, we'll have that in mind, right? Yeah. Put some sites, you know, some pages away, block some pages <laughs> for, yeah. for a representative of the new government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would make, uh, that would have a massive impact. Now, right? now I've remembered now that you have already had the, the deputy chancellor that was openly gay, right? Mm -hmm. Guido Vestervella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It just came to my mind yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, at this point in time, we do have some guests here, uh, which I can hardly see because I, uh, I'm blind, totally <laughs> blind. Uh, but still, I would like to ask if there are <coughs> any questions to any of us here. We have a microphone that would m make sure that you're heard. Please. Okay, so thank you first for being here. I think, especially for my generation, it's quite special to see what um, we have here and to value and to be more humble to that what uh, we've accomplished here and what you are accomplishing. So this is very inspiring. And the question I have is concerning solidarity. So you spoke about patriarchy and patriarchal systems being the source of hatred. So I wanted to ask how important is solidarity in your LGBT community as in Germany or also in the UK, the US, uh, LGBT communities are accused of being sexist, uh, racist at times and not being um, engaged in solidarity enough. <laughs> oh my God, Dodi, that, that's, yeah, I, we, could, we could discuss that for days now, you know? Mm -hmm all those little wars inside the community, right? That's mm -hmm. what you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, Polish LGBT community is full of those little wars too, yeah? Like um, uh, now for the last few years, I think the transgender movement is on the rise and emancipation of transgender people is on the rise and it's great, it's brilliant, it's fantastic. Uh, and it also creates a lot of discussion, what is transphobic and what is not transphobic. Uh, and in many cases, it creates very useful discussions. And in some other cases, it creates not very useful divisions. Mm -hmm. Because we have to bear in mind that our main, homo that our main uh, enemy is homophobia and transphobia and not ourselves, you know. We can fight and we can discuss on, you know, endlessly about, for example, auto-homophobia, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have been, all of us, we have been, we have had examples of internalized homophobia. Me too. I was in the closet for years. So, you know, I was... I was homophobic when I was 15 or when I was 20. I was extremely homophobic. I would laugh at jokes about gay people just to prove that I'm not gay. Uh, and w we have all such experience because we have grown up in a very homophobic and transphobic society. Uh, so I think we should not focus on any little traces of homophobia, internalized homophobia or transphobia in ourselves. We have to focus on our main enemy that is outside our community and shows and exactly and show solidarity. And that's why, you know, um, I promised myself and I for now, I, I, <laughs> I have kept that promise not to criticize any uh, other LGBT initiatives that are being established by other LGBT organizations in Poland, even if I uh, may not like all of them, you know, because I think to, 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 for me, uh, it would be harmful. So... Uh, to, uh, I should rather, what you said, I, uh, I should rather show solidarity, uh, even if I don't like 
every each one of other LGBT initiatives, you know? I'm not sure if I answered your question correctly. You did, thank no? you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Be because you, you, you said about solidarity. I, I'm not sure if I you re replied about solidarity so much. Okay. I think your, your appeal... Um, you know, Marish is also in the live stream for the uh, Gay Pride on Saturday. Yeah. And, and I think that appeal you just made would be well placed there too. All right. <laughs> because I think the, and, and I feel that's what you mentioned or what you hinted at, uh, the uh, queer community uh, also in Munich uh, mm -hmm. is not free of what you just described. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yes. And it doesn't oh, yes. help at all. Yes. Uh, so I think such an appeal from the outside perspective yeah. would be very helpful. I have been many times as a chief editor of the only published LGBT magazine accused of homophobia or transphobia. And I have learned somehow to live with it, you know? Uh, I have learned to, okay, that's the part of my job, to, to be accused of it and to let it go, to not focus on that and to keep going, because that, that will happen, and that is happening. Mm -hmm. And not start internal wars, right? Yes, yes, yeah. You have to bear in mind that you, you have to focus on the main thing and, and keep going, because otherwise, the, those very negative voices that, that, exists, that exist within this, the, the, the community will bring you down. You, you can't let them get into your head too much. Yeah. Any more questions? Or is anyone by any chance following uh, the Facebook questions, maybe? Are there any? Because we unfortunately can't. Okay, there are no questions on Facebook. Good. Any more questions here? Then I would. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to th say thank you all for coming here. Um, I'm from America, and so I have like thank you guys. Um, this is my first Pride in Munich. In Munich. Um, but Welcome. so my question. Um, was, um, so I know in Poland there was one of the regions that actually became an LGBT free zone and then took it back. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could expand upon like why that happened and like if that can be a model for the other regions to follow. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think the reason is <coughs> the fear that they will not get the money from the European Union. Yeah, that's what I theorized yeah. as well. So it's better to abolish this declaration because it might be a problem in the future. Uh, in some cases, uh, they were so ignorant that they declared themselves uh, not LGBT free zone, but they uh, confused the letters. And they declared themselves like L, you know, D, B, T, free zone. <laughs> And in one particular case, they wanted to abolish it, and they couldn't because the, the vote, you know, the, the, the notion didn't pass. So they stayed LD, BT, free zone community. So it's out of sheer ignorance also. Um, also, there was one case when the European Commission really acted, but not, not sufficiently. Um, they took the money back from, I think, six municipalities. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, like, oh, scary. Mm -hmm. they, uh, the, the European Union reacts. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, it, it was like uh, six municipalities out of 100. Mm -hmm. And now uh, there are some increasing voices from uh, single uh, city councillors, uh, one of them just from a few, few days ago, and she said, sorry, I was stupid. Mm -hmm. I voted for LGBT free zone, and I shouldn't have. Sorry, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, 
there are some you know positive signs but just to be clear yeah, yeah. this is the minority right yes there are yeah. still 100 municipalities that are lgbt free zones and of course you know it doesn't it, it uh, practically it means nothing it's just a declaration right mm. they don't put us in jail yet but it's the declaration that is also you know scary because there might be some other steps right for now it's just it's just a declaration but it's still scary it's very scary for people who live in these municipalities right i exactly. mean it must be awful to live in a yeah. in a in a lgbti free zone yeah. when yeah. you feel uh, yes. queer right yeah you 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 live in this little village and you know that okay they declared themselves free of you mm. right uh, or in I'll give you one more example that is, for me, it's even more horrifying. I know a gay boy that is 25 years old and he told me he's not going to come out to his parents anytime soon because they are very homophobic and fundamentally Catholic. And also, there is this magazine in Poland, Gazeta Polska, and you know the, the magazines somehow distribute little gadgets mm -hmm. to their uh, readers and this magazine uh, produced a sticker with saying LGBT free zone mm -hmm. so you, you can put that, that sticker on your I don't know refrigerator or a car or something mm -hmm. and and the parents of this boy bought this uh, magazine with the sticker and his father put the sticker on, the, on, on, on their door to their flat. So can you imagine the boy lives with, with his parents and he lives in the LGBT free zone. He opens the door every day. Right? He opens the door every day to the LGBT free zone. And I think it's the, you know, and for me, I'm sure subconsciously, this horrible father knows that his son is gay. And it's just a matter of aggression towards his own son. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Still, I don't know if I ask if I responded. No, no, to you totally question. did. And <laughs> Sorry. I, no, I was also curious about the stickers as well because I had heard about them, but like, yeah. In my research, I couldn't find much information about like what they like much about them really like I just knew that they were handed out yeah um, and so thank you for elaborating on it because it's very fascinating the stickers yeah. Yeah. thank you mm -hmm. thank you for being here any more questions Maybe we'll go this in upland here wir haben noch ein Thema deswegen würde ich jetzt mich bedanken herzlichen Dank for being here and I'm Thank sure we stay connected and of we course. make sure you get an interview <laughs> of, with, yes. with a member of the new German government. <laughs> Thank you, Margarita, for Thank coming. Thank you. And Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we come to an end, we want to talk about the support that the queer community in Poland gets from the queer community outside Poland. And that's why we are extremely happy that the that a board member of Gay Pride Germany is from Munich. And so he was happy to come here tonight. And I would like to introduce Henrik Höfener on stage. Even wearing a rainbow mask. Right. Perfect, right? <laughs> Perfectly designed. <laughs> Henrik, welcome. Hi. Thank you for Hello. joining us. Um, I'm happy to be here. And now we can uh, take off the mask again. Uh, we have gay pride organizations in all bigger cities in Germany. Yeah. And we have a sort of head organization that tries to coordinate the activities or topics that these gay prides communicate outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a board that directs the activities. And Henrik is one of the members on the board. Um, right. He was on, on the news last week, or was it two weeks before, uh, when we had this rainbow, uh, you know, yeah, face rainbow thing. in Germany, right? the <coughs> yes. rainbow thing yeah. in Germany, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard. 
So I asked you over coffee, uh, have you felt any support from the queer community from outside in Poland and from outside Poland and you said you weren't sure. And I have asked Henrik. So um, Henrik, what support have you um, tried to give the queer community in Poland or in Hungary? Um, mainly um, the support is um, to inform people uh, what's happen, uh, happening yeah. in uh, Poland and um, uh, Hungary, no, Ungarn, Hungary, Hungary, I guess, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, in Russia. And uh, so we post uh, a lot of content uh, in social media about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a matter of um, hard uh, uh, blood, I, yeah, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. for uh, the members of uh, uh, CSD Germany, mm -hmm. German Pride. Um, so they are connected to uh, different cities um, like Danzig, uh, uh, yeah. Warsaw, yeah. Uh, and um, some other cities. Um, you talked about um, uh, shortly before, before I forget that, I want to give you a present from us uh, about the stickers uh, that uh, somebody produced in uh, Poland against uh, uh, the, the queer community. We produced uh, a, a sticker to promote, to um, show solidarity, uh, especially for uh, 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 the countries in Europa, uh, Europe, like uh, Poland, Hungary, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, and even Russia. This is the sticker. Um, it's the motto, the hashtag, don't kick LG LGBTIQ rights mm -hmm. um, and the colors of the rainbow. Um, it was given away um, um, on some people, not on all, uh, in front of the stadium. I hand it over to you. Thank you. And. Thank you. Uh, it would be a pleasure to uh, give you more of these uh, stickers to uh, um, hand, out hand it out in, in Poland to every father who wants to uh, uh, put it over the other uh, sticker yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on the door. Under uh, your under shoes. Your, under your shoes. shoes. Your shoes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So that's one part of our um, work that we do. We try to inform uh, um, the community about uh, what is happening in, in Poland and uh, Hungary. Um, and uh, even in our newspaper that we produce this, year's, this year, we have an article about the situation of um, it's called Querstimme. Mm -hmm. And we have an article in there about um, um, what's happening in, in, in Poland um, okay. and um, so we inform the people about uh, the stuff what's happening in this way too. So that's a, mag that's a newspaper for, the, for all the gay prides in Germany? That's um, a good question. It's not a speci uh, specific for uh, the gay prides produced but okay. the idea um, is um, in there too. Okay. Um, but it's produced more for um, heteronormative uh, people. I understand. So mm -hmm. to inform mm -hmm. uh, them mm -hmm. about uh, uh, what is gay life, what is, um, uh, uh, what is a trans person, uh, what's the situation uh, in that. And um, mm -hmm. one, of our, uh, one of our hard proje projects is um, um, uh, Gleiche Rechte für alle Menschen, um, mm -hmm. Grundgesetz. Um, we are um, changing uh, the, 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 the law, um, the main law in Germany, uh, uh, Article 3, um, exactly. We have an initiative that tries to uh, um, get equal rights for LGBTI mm -hmm. into our uh, constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. right. And that is part of the you know, challenges or the, the yeah. demands that we have for gay pride in Germany this year. Right. So you heard... Uh, the, the gay pride organization in Germany is trying to help by uh, information, in, in information about the situation in Poland. Um, gay pride in Munich has gone a bit further by making the situation in Poland or general in, East, in Eastern Europe a big topic. Yeah. Uh, it's in the magazine, you know, you 
uh, all of you yeah. are interested to read more about yeah. Poland. Um, Mariusz uh, volunteered an article for the K Pride magazine in Munich. Um, Yes. Is, is there anything else that you can think of how we as queer organizations here um, mm -hmm. could help you guys in Poland or Hungary? Um, I think I, I've just remembered about one more initiative mm -hmm. that I think is very uh, interesting. Uh, there is a gay pride or pride, um, transborder trans pride mm -hmm. between, I think, the city of Frankfurt. Okay. Uh, and Swubice on the Polish side, okay. and it's taking place. I think I could, I, I would have to check it. Uh, it's taking place. I think for fourth or fifth of September this year, mm -hmm. uh, and I and it's the second time they organize it. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to the first time. I, I I don't even know the 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 route, but I I can imagine they are you know mm -hmm. they are crossing the border, right? Yeah. So I think that that's a very good initiative. Mm -hmm. And um, I would welcome a lot of German activists mm -hmm. or just regular queer people mm -hmm. to come and see what Pride looks like in Poland and not just in Warsaw because okay. Warsaw is a different world mm -hmm. from, from the rest of Poland, I right? <coughs> there is... Uh, there is uh, uh, pride parade scheduled, not not even scheduled because they are hiding the mm. the date mm -hmm. in Lublin, okay. and probably it will be the one and only pride in the eastern part of Poland, okay. and that should be really hard I because of the protesters. Yeah. So I think going to Lublin for pride mm. would, would help it. us. And Lublin has a. Uh, uh, how should I say that? Uh, yeah. A very special history. Right? Yes. That is not easy. Uh, that is at not. All, yes, right? of course. Yes. Mm. Just near Lublin, we've got we've got the concentration camp. Actually, a death camp. Maidanek, right? right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah. yeah, and we have been putting rainbow flags on Maidan in Maidanek for a few years now. That means there is a, uh, an idea that maybe you can take with you, Henrik, to publish the gay pride uh, dates in Poland yeah. far more widely uh, on our news channels, right? Mm -hmm. In our media, in the gay guide, in the pride guide for Germany, or of course in Munich also. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to make, to help yeah. more people traveling to Poland. Yeah, you've right? got quite close to Breslau, mm -hmm. which is Wrocław in Polish, mm -hmm. and they have pride on the second on the 2nd of October. Okay. So just so that's a October. come to our pride. Right. Who is managing the sub-channel, the, the Facebook channel? I think that's, is that you or who, who do we need to talk to to get the dates on it? I think that sounds good, right? Uh, we should do that. So, you know, let us yeah. know the dates yeah. and we make sure we publish that on the CSD Munich page, yeah. Facebook page and yeah. on, on the sub page. Right? Danzig Pride is on the 21st of August. So, uh, Marish <laughs> will send us a list, and I'll make sure to, to get it distributed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's one more idea. Um, we have European Pride right? yeah. every year. Um, this year in Copenhagen. Maybe not every year, every second year. Is it every second and year? it's not a, a European Pride, it's World Pride. It's World Pride right now, mm. okay. It yeah. used to be, I thought it was European Pride, no? no? Okay. So, when has the last World Pride been in Poland? I'm sure uh, this was never happened before. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know how a good uh, or how well uh, organized uh, um, the, the the Polish uh, prides are in uh, Iga Iga uh, the the head uh, organization okay. for uh, um, all prides worldwide. Okay. So, but I'm sure that uh, some of them are in uh, in this, um, and you need yes. and you need um, the power, the the the, the strength uh, power. to to organize it. But um, Munich uh, is um, very open to. That's why I know that uh, very open to um, support. Support. And um, we would support, um, 
I'm, I'm sure we could support that too, mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. There was um, Euro Pride in Warsaw. There was Euro Pride in Euro Warsaw? Pride. Yeah. Oh, okay. In 2010. Yeah, but okay. not World Pride. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, why not? And um, the idea is uh, not, yeah. There is an idea to, uh, to make a shared uh, um, event uh -huh. with different cities. Okay. So uh, why, why don't make European Pride uh, with a, um, a Polish, Polish city, city yeah. with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with Munich, with Berlin, with uh, Frankfurt, with mm -hmm. whatever city is uh, mm -hmm. able to, uh, to yeah. do that. And we have also a um, 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 timetable or a, a, a agenda. Um, yeah, for all prides in Germany. Mm -hmm. So um, we offer this um, uh, to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, it's in this paper too, mm -hmm. in the middle of a page. Uh, so everybody can look uh, when is uh, a pride in Germany. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. So why not uh, uh, doing that for uh, uh, Pol Poland too. and um, Hungary, uh, Hungary too? too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so as an um, extended version um, of, of, of it. Yeah. Yes, yes. This leads me directly to my final statement. But before I make this, uh, before I do this, uh, I want to give you the chance for a final statement, Marius, uh -huh. um, to all of us who, who all, all of all, everyone listening today. Mm -hmm. My final statement would be just be loud, be loud and be clear and well, I, I can't say come out because you have already come out, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, be loud and, and just like this person that asking the question uh, said, show solidarity. Um, you know, there, there was the movement once in Poland called Solidarity and we really played a, a very important role in... in uh, getting rid of communism. And that the name of the movement was Solidarity. Now, now we need solidarity in other, in other areas. So uh, please be loud. That would be my statement, yes. Thank you, Marius. <laughs> and <clears throat> we just talked about what, what my statement is. Uh, and that is what Marius has written as the last sentence in his article in the Gay Pride magazine, and that is, uh, silence is our enemy, but information is our weapon. And that is what we really can all help together uh, to make this a strong weapon. And I'd like you to, I'd like you all to uh, join in uh, that. Damit sage ich herzlichen Dank allen, ähm, die heute dabei waren und äh, wünsche euch noch allen einen schönen Pride in München. Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Mark. Danke schön. <laughs>